I'm Kevin McLean with Sun24. Most farmers in developing countries burn their crop waste to clear their fields for the next season. This causes enormous amounts of air pollution and climate damage. As this video demonstrates, the solution is amazingly simple. The pile of maize stalks on the left is lit on the side. The pile on the right is lit on top. This is the only difference. Most African farmers burn their maize stalks like the pile on the left. They light the pile on the side, the pile explodes into smoke, and the stalks burn to ash. We train farmers to light the pile on the top like the right pile. The pile burns down in a controlled manner. Smoke from below passes through the flame above, and almost all of the smoke burns off. See the smoke from the left pile? That smoke contains methane, nitrous oxide, and black carbon, very powerful climate drivers. The smoke also contains fine particulates, air pollution that kills. Stopping almost all of these emissions is so simple. Instead of lighting the side of the pile, light the top. It's that simple. As a huge bonus, the farmer can make char by quenching the embers before they all burn to ash. When the fire starts to go down, smother the embers with dirt or water and the farmer is left with char. The farmer can use the char as biochar, which is like an organic fertilizer that can double his crop yield, or he can make briquettes to replace wood charcoal. This video is six minutes long. This is all it takes to burn a pile and make char. At three minutes, the farmer starts to shovel dirt to smother the embers to make char. The top-down burn method works with most dry plants, such as rice straw, bamboo, elephant grass, wheat straw, bean straw, cassava stems, and sugarcane bagasse. Really any dry plant material that is not too dense to block the air from circulating within the pile. For example, sawdust and rice husks do not work. If the farmer wants to use the char as biochar, he will first need to charge it. He can mix in urine or manure and it'll be ready. Then he can toss a handful into the planting hole or into a small hole next to the emerged plant. The biochar will provide nutrients throughout the life of the plant and biochar will absorb water to protect against drought. If the soil is poor and the farmer does not already use chemical fertilizers, his yields could double. We often see doubling in Sub-Saharan Africa where most soils are poor and few farmers can afford chemical fertilizers. Or the farmer can use the char to make briquettes. Compressing the char in a plastic pipe is a simple way to make quality briquettes that burn just as well as wood charcoal. Briquettes are easier to make than wood charcoal and can be sold for the same price as wood charcoal, giving the farmer a sizable profit. Think about it. Farmers can end the production of wood charcoal by making and selling briquettes from their crop waste. Wood charcoal is horrible. It is usually made by cutting down trees and shrinking forests. The wood smolders in earthen mounds for days, emitting smoke the entire time. It is estimated that making one ton of charcoal causes 10 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. So if farmers can make and sell briquettes, they can slow deforestation and mitigate climate change while making a good profit. This will work in all developing countries. Look at India. Every November, New Delhi is shrouded in air pollution, partly caused by the burning of rice straw. If instead farmers use this top-down burn method of burning their rice straw, much of the New Delhi air pollution would disappear. And the farmers can either use the char as an organic fertilizer or make and sell briquettes. All we need to do is show farmers how to make and use char from their crop waste. It's really that simple.